Hello and welcome back. I fixed the bug with the running animation by ch taking out the loop pose. For some reason loop pose screws up the uh, root bone transformation. So if you have a situation where your root bone transformation isn't being baked properly, you can unclick the loop pose. And I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of these right now. So today we're going to work on making this a little bit better, and that's going to be integrating in the mouse look at a more, excuse me, a more deep level. Uh, so previously we had this mouse look where we basically cloned the look and feel of the first person controller. Of course it didn't actually work very well because we have a camera where uh, we our character just spins arbitrarily, and we don't have any I do not have any indication of that. Uh, and of course our up and down are separate from the character and we end up uh, moving up and down um, kind of regardless of where the character is standing. So the first thing we have to do is we have to add in a new empty game object inside of this game object. We're going to move that to uh, more or less here. Maybe here. And then we're going to put the main camera inside of that. And this object will be the one that we have the mouse look attached to. So we'll take this mouse look off and stick it here. And uh, because of that, now when we move our mouse up and down, it will move relative to her head rather than relative to the camera. And that makes a lot more sense. But we still have the issue of this not actually uh, giving us rotation. One of our options is to uh, remove the script, the mouse look script that we're using and replace it with one of our own, but this mouse look script is quite stable. Uh, so rather than doing that, all we really need is the same uh, inputs. We just need to keep track of those inputs. So we're going to go ahead and open up our avatar controller. And we're going to say uh, float float turn equals input dot get axis and I believe it's called mouse X. And that's the actual axis that keeps, a tra keeps track of how far the mouse has moved on the X axis. And this is a really great tool because it ignores things like mouse lock, mouse repositioning, hitting the side of the screen. It ignores all of that stuff and it just gets the raw how far the player moved the mouse, which is perfect. And then we can just say animator.setfloat turn and turn. But of course this is unbounded. It could be any size and this is very much bounded. It should be between 1 and negative 1. So we have to bound it. Let's say turn divided by equals... Well, let's go ahead and just give an, get an idea of what these values are. So debug.log turn. So you see that they aren't actually very large. I don't know if you can see that very well, console here. They aren't actually very large. They don't ever break 0.5. Oh, it got to 0.7 just for a second there. So really, all we need to do is just uh, make sure they don't exceed the limits. Uh, if turn is less than negative 1, turn equals negative 1. If turn is greater than 1, turn equals 1. There are other ways to do that, but it really doesn't matter. There we are. We don't have to actually move the character at all because the mouse look script is responsible for that. All we have to do is make the animation play properly. But you can see that this animation is not playing properly because it's jaggy. Uh, well, our turning is jaggy, so of course it's jaggy. In this case, there is no easy way for us to make the axis um, fluid like we did with the forward and side axes. So we are, in fact, going to need to manually uh, blunt this and the way we do that is we simply set our uh, our current turn rather than our turn so current turn and current turn and here what we do is we say okay well current turn equals mathf dot lerp turn, uh, sorry, it's a current turn. We want to go from how we're currently turning to the current turn value at a specific speed, like say time.delta time times 3. 
That's easy enough, right? Now, I didn't uh, cap turn because if we are moving so fast that we are hitting twos and threes, that means that we probably want to jump to that animation real quick. And so this will give us that strength. Oh. Current from. Current turn. I type things funny. So now when we turn, we're not getting any animation at all. And that's because uh, our animations are much too slow. We need to have a much faster snap to it. So one of the actions we can do is all of this stuff we've been doing, we can instead say... Sorry, I didn't play around with this at all, so this is my first time trying it. We can just say, if turn is less than 0, turn equals negative 1, and if turn is greater than 0, turn equals 1. Uh, and we can actually leave all this stuff in now that I'm thinking about it. But we want to hop to it a lot faster. Like, uh, if turn is greater than current turn, then current turn equals turn. Else, there we are. Uh, this is a trick. That'll get you every time. You need to make sure to get the absolute value of these things that have a range from negative one to one, because otherwise you'll be in trouble when you when you can't re why you know why when we turn left it feels sloshy. Well, that just means you forgot to take the absolute value at some point. So what this means is we're going to snap to it when we start to turn, and then we're going to fade, so we get a snappy feel. It might be a little bit too snappy. So it does feel like it's uh, quite a bit too snappy. So what we're going to do to make it less snappy, we are in fact going to lerp it. But we're going to lerp it real fast. Like that. So that means that we're going to have a snappy start and a sluggish end. And that, that feels pretty good. Now, uh, we can get more realistic if we would like to, but right now that's not a concern. Now you can see how uh, the turning animation actually takes over for the walking animation. Um, and that's because of how the animator is set up. So if we go into the animator and take a look, we've got this movement animation, and it's very straightforward, right? Let's get this moving. Now this is a, a freeform Cartesian animation system where we take strafe and forward into account and obviously this would be forward and this would be strafe. In the middle we've got an animation called turn idle and here we've got one called turn forward and then they've got uh, strafe left, strafe right, so on and so forth. So that means that our strafing will always take full effect uh, because the strafing out here at the edges is just the strafing. So if we were to hold left we get 100% strafing regardless, no matter what. But if we hold forward, we don't get 100% forward. We get 100% of this blend tree that is between that that is turn. See how that's a turn there? So that's obviously going to be uh, the turning is going to override the forward. So there's uh, a whole lot of ways that we can try and fix this, and the easiest way is to change these thresholds to minus two and positive two. And we only run from negative one to one, and that means that we'll never actually end up. Uh, getting the full turn. So we can see that here, how you get the, the foot movement a little bit to sort of imply that you're turning, but you no longer get the just turning. However, when we are stable, we get the full turning animation because that's a different set of animations. That's a different blend tree. And now this turning animation, it's not, not terribly good, um, but we can always change it if we need to. Uh, and another thing we can do is right now we're snapping to one and instead what we can do is we can just snap to something big like this and that'll snap too hard when it's big so we would have to we would have to be a little bit careful with that I think right now snapping to one is nice and easy and works fine So now our character runs around just fine, our mouse works, works fine, and I know I said in one of these videos that this would be the one where we actually get to attack, but as you can see we're not attacking. Uh, I don't even have an attack animation built, so we're going to have to work with that later on. Looks like some of these slimes do not have their uh, rotation protected, and therefore can be knocked over. That's fun. 
All right, so there it is. It's a perfectly it's a perfectly suitable uh, third person animation system for very basic stuff. Uh, the animations are not very good, and a big part of that is just the fact that uh, I haven't actually had to animate a warrior before. Um, I've had to animate people running around, but then they don't have their arms out at their sides like this. So the warrior animations I'm a little bit uncomfortable with at the moment. But it looks like there's one last thing we need to change and then we'll be done for the day. And that thing is, here in An Hero, we have this idle animation and we need to unloop it. Because the root motion was not being correctly applied. Before, whenever we were idle, she was kind of staring off to the right. And this should fix that. This should make it so that she stares straight ahead rather than staring off to the right. Come on. Hmm, she still stares to the right. I guess I didn't fix it. Maybe I have to fix that in Blender or something. Well, it works for now. Uh, and in the next episode, we'll go ahead and let her punch stuff. And that'll be, that'll be good fun. So thanks for your time, and uh, I hope you learned a little bit about how to create basic character controllers. Uh, by the way, I didn't actually create that animation on screen, that animation system on screen, because it was a lot of trying to figure things out, the best way to do things. Um, you can feel free to copy it yourself. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just show it for a couple seconds here so that you can get an idea. Uh, if we dive into this, how do we, uh, there it is. So this is it. I'll give you a chance to pause if you really want to see it. Yay! All right. So in the next episode, we'll start to kill stuff. <laughs>